let the church say amen let the church say amen god has spoken so let the church say amen let the church say amen let the church say amen cause God has spoken so let the church say amen good morning Happy Sunday, good Sunday. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the mental house with me, your host, Khadija. You know, I thought I'd start that um, song today with that because a lot of y'all really, really think that I hate church people. (laughs) And it's so far from the truth. Um, I don't hate. Really, nobody. You know what I hate? I hate oppression. I hate um, colonization. Those are the things that I hate. I hate greed. But humanity, you can't you can't beat me with that stick. And amen, ashe, it means the same thing. Okay, just it depends on where your knowledge base goes. So I could very easily say, let the church say Ashe. Let the church say Ashe. Cause God has spoken. And if I sang that, then y'all be like, Well why 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 is she saying that instead of uh uh let the church say amen? So so let, let me just try to, for a minute, get up underneath the programming. A lot of y'all think that I hate church people or James Cleveland because I point out our um, weaknesses, um, fallibilities, and I go in on people who have hurt people and traumatized them and people who have been traumatized by the church myself included okay so let me i ain't gonna act like i come from heaven somewhere i fell from hell come from there like the rest of y'all church religion all that stuff split my family right down the middle i want to know what i want you to know first of all what you're dealing with See, you're not dealing with nobody that don't know what they're talking about. I'm saying religion split my family right down the middle. And like Karl Marx said, religion, and I agree with him actually, is is the opium of the people. Y'all running around here talking about crackheads. I ain't talking about uh, my supporters because... Most of them are well versed and school me on on a few things, but what I want to say is, through my experiences, whether in show business, whether out of show business, whether in church, whether I've met so many people that have been damaged, I so, I can't even begin to tell you how many people have been damaged by church. And then y'all got the nerve to get angry that I speak for the people who have been traumatized by church. Traumatized by religion. A lot of times when they say leave your problem, that's why I don't want to hear all of that. Because when you, you, you a hypocrite and get away from me, I never knew you. That's what you're going to hear. 
Because most of y'all, if y'all had to really deal with what people are dealing with, you would kick them out to church. Like a friend of mine told the um, pastor, no, she told um, a missionary that she, and I, I want to commend this pastor, um, Pastor Davis, first of all. Let me make sure I mention that. Said that she don't need to be there because she like women. Now that's a that was an honest assessment. Somebody told somebody that, you know, in my past and in my present, you know, I, I haven't had a relationship in a while, but I like women. And she thought she was in a safe space, and the person told the pastor. And because she said, I don't think this person need to be working with kids. I don't think this person need to be on the welcoming committee uh, because she said she was a lesbian. Now, this is the church. Okay. And I'm so glad that the, the pastor had the forethought to say, um, well, did they mention that they had an attraction for children? Well, no, no. Well, this was consent. This, she, that. Well, I don't think we should run her away. If, if anything, I think she should be sitting here a little longer, and being held a little closer, because if our goal is to accept people the way are they are, or or to, or to present them with a better way of thinking, then we can't run them away. And the missionary huffed and puffed and blew the house down because she didn't want to accept that that person came to them and told them their experiences and that they still wanted to participate in church. If you can't go to the altar, if you can't go to the church with your demons, because that's where y'all all at, <laughs> then how in the hell can you be upset with, uh, at somebody who um, is taken up for the people who have been victimized by people in the church? Children? You know, <laughs> the story of Sylvester, which really bothered, you know, I love Sylvester. I met Sylvester. I love Sylvester. Um, and I was in the heart of the disco era. To know that his first experiences were molestation in church is a hurtful thing. And then the same people that molested him, as he got to be a little older, start talking about him, shunning him. Well, you know God don't like homosexuals. He's like, and this is this is the first person that turned me out. The hypocrisy is maddening. So for those of y'all who think that I hate James Cleveland or I hate church folk and all that stuff because I point out our frailties and our fallibilities. I mean That don't make me hate them, really. It just keeps it keeps me honest with myself. It keeps me honest to know that the people who turned their backs on me and the people who turned their backs on my friends, the people who knew that my friends and, and some of them were being molested and never did anything about it, when I speak about it, I see all those faces. I don't see James Cleveland and his piano playing. What I see is who did that to him? Who made him have a history of molestation? Allegedly. That's where my heart go. But I do acknowledge, first of all, that what he did was wrong. 
I do acknowledge first and foremost, and my sympathy goes for the people who are subjected to all that hurt and pain. And since it's Sunday morning, it just be fitting that when you go to church today and you pray, pray for victims. When you hear about Cassie, well, she's settled now, so I know, you know, y'all think, oh, that's why she just wanted the money. And so what? Because nothing is like living with a mind full of torment. And you still ain't got nothing. And you still didn't get your dream and everything you thought. I know that the scripture is a scripture that said, what would it profit a man to gain the world and lose his soul? But if you a kid, you ain't thinking about that. Let's keep it, let's keep it 100. So if I, as an older person, with a lot more experiences and a lot more um, uh, um, ways to see, because they, they ain't been nine, they ain't been my age before, but I've been their age before. So when I begin to manipulate and try to turn stuff, that's what I keep in mind. They, they're young. And just as Cassie said that she was molested and hurt and made the so what she went there for a record deal. Everybody do something to follow their dreams. That don't mean they supposed to be molested. When Billy Preston's mama uh, took him up to different churches and allowed him to play, she had no idea they was going to be molesting her son. And when they and when she found out, most of them like most parents don't do nothing no way. Shut up, boy. You know that didn't happen to you. I know boys right now, men, who told their mothers that they were molested by somebody in the church. And the mother told them, don't say nothing like that no more. Because, see, the preacher was her escape. Her, the preacher was her vicariously lived through man. So when we start talking about damage and and why people do stuff and well, why she got some money, I'm glad she got the money. I wish all the victims of sexual abuse could go back to their um, abusers and get some money. Because I'm going to tell you something. In a capitalist society, it will pay for therapy. It will help you manage your day-to-day -day life instead of watching people spend money. The same person that molested you, but just throwing money all up in the air and doing this, and you sitting back and don't have anything. You broke. You can't even go to therapy for the trauma they done bestowed upon you. <laughs> I don't hate the people. I do hate the behavior. And that don't mean that I'm perfect and I don't sit up here and profess to be perfect or none of those things. But I repent every day. And the things that I've done, I make sure they don't fall in that line. No adult molesting a child. Because those things are wrong. And those things are hard for a person to come back from. No matter if I was molested myself, it doesn't matter. I don't have no right. As an adult, I ain't talking about no kid play stuff. As an adult, to molest kids. And you can't just sweep it under the rug and say, God going to take care of it, okay? And that's it. Let's don't talk about it no more. That's like all them people that watch Cassie get stomped in her head, stomped in her stomach, punched all in the face, and didn't do anything because Puff had money. A lot of us are some sorry, sorry sacks of, well, you know what the word is. It rhymes with it. And I always got the nerve to point out what the scriptures say. You can't even walk in truth. 
You can't even swallow the truth. You can't even hear the hearts of the victims that were abused. You can't even feel their pain. Because you want to hurry up and get to the next level. Oh, that's just to give him. Let's don't think about it no more. That's not how any of this works. So anybody out there who has been molested by somebody real close, a father figure or authoritarian figure, you have every right to grieve. You have every right to share that with a therapist. You have a right to share anywhere where you feel is a safe space. And nobody should come down on you like you were responsible for what happened to you and why your life is messed up and why you can't get your thoughts together and why every night you torment it and why you can't have a healthy relationship. You get the right to speak up for yourself. And, I, and I'm going to leave it at that. So have a good day. I love y'all out there. If you like what you hear, please subscribe and share the channel. And let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. And God has spoken. So let the church say amen. I'll see y'all in the next video.